Hello, and welcome back to Meet the Masters. I'm your teacher, Mrs. Stuckey. Today we have a fantastic artist for you. His name was Norman Rockwell. Here's a photograph of Rockwell. He was born February 3rd, 1894 in New York City. And here's a really cute baby picture of him. He had one older brother named Jarvis. Now he was a really good artist from a young age. And so when he was done for, with high school, he transferred to the Chase Art School. If you were with me last month, you will remember Edward Hopper. And he also attended the same school in New York City. Excuse me, class. Class. Okay, so... While he was at the Chase Art School, he met this man, George Bridgman, and he was his mentor and helped him develop his style of illustration that he used for the rest of his life. Now, his very first paying job was painting a set of four Christmas cards, and that was the very first thing that he sold as an artist. So here's an example of a Christmas painting that he did. Okay, and then he was hired as a staff artist at Boys Life. So that was a magazine for the Boy Scouts. And he would paint the cover and the story illustrations inside. And he was so good that he quickly became the boss and he was soon the art editor there. And then in 1916, he meets the cartoonist Clyde Forsyth, and they become fast friends and share an art studio. So Forsyth was working at the Saturday Evening Post as a cartoonist, and so he introduces Norman, all the way at the edge, I can't quite get there, um, to the editors at the Saturday Evening Post, and they hire him to also do illustrations but for their covers <laughs> so here's the very first cover that Rockwell did for the Saturday Evening Post and it's pretty cute it was done for Mother's Day and so if you look all of his covers had a lot of fun little details and a lot of comedy in them so you've got two boys they're going to play baseball and their friend is stuck on Mother's Day taking care of the baby and of course, he's dressed up like an old man, like he's the father and he's got a baby bottle in his pocket and he's just so upset that he's got to do this while his friends are teasing him and they get to go have fun and play baseball. Okay, so that same year, he meets and marries his first wife, Irene. So there's a photograph of them. Oh, that was so cute. So cute. And he continues to be an illustrator for the Saturday Evening Post. So here's a really cute one of a little couple and there's lots of details. There's a fishing pole. They've been fishing and they're just relaxing watching the sunset and the puppy is there. Here's a cute one from Halloween. There's a little girl dressed up as a ghost and she's scaring the man and his glasses are flying off and there's a dog ready to defend or maybe the dog is a little scared himself oh and then this one santa is so tired because he's been working overtime building toys he has conked out and the elves are taking up the slack and finishing all the toys for christmas okay so he divorces his first wife, and then he meets his second wife, Mary. <laughs> and together they have three boys. So they have Thomas, Jarvis, and Peter. And his boys are often models for his illustrations and paintings. So speaking of modeling for his paintings, here's an example. So this is the little boy, this man, is the little boy who modeled for this painting. So his name was Thomas Paquin, and he would come to the studio and pose with the trumpet in, in different scenarios so that photographs could be taken and then Rockwell could paint the scene. 
and he said that was his first job and he bought his first pair of skis with the pay that he earned. So here's kind of a fun one. It's called Triple Self Portrait. Rockwell's painting, looking in the mirror, and then painting his image. And then you see the photographs on his canvas. Super important because he was a photorealist. So this is an easy to understand concept. He would set up scenarios, have them photographed, or he would photograph them himself, and then he would paint those photographs. So it's just when an artist studies a photograph and then recreates it in another medium. In his case, he would paint and illustrate those images. So here is an example of his photorealism. This particular year, both baseball teams in Chicago were doing really poorly. And so he was in Chicago at a game and he went out on the field and had his photographer take pictures of the audience. So I believe the woman yelling all the way on the edge is the pitcher's wife. And then there's some hecklers in the crowd. So he had lots of photographs taken. And then he went back to his studio and painted that cover. I think he was also in Chicago for this one where he saw a man taking care of the clock. And so he took photographs of this man up on a high ladder, maintaining this clock and then went back and made a cover. And this is a pretty funny one called the babysitter. And so you can see this young girl trying to babysit and take care of this baby who's upset, but she's got to do her homework and it's just kind of chaotic and it's a mess. Um, I guess the baby was really happy and docile for a really long time until it finally got tired and they were able to catch it crying for just a minute and take a picture of it before they comforted him. Okay, so in 1941, right before the U.S. got into World War II, um, the president at the time, President Roosevelt, gave a speech called the four freedoms and the first was freedom of speech and Rockwell made paintings of each of the freedoms so here's the first one the freedom of speech you can see there's a blue collar man that means he's kind of middle or lower class he doesn't make a ton of money but he's at a town meeting and he has the same right to stand up and give his opinion as the other people in the meeting who probably are wealthier and have more money than him. And pay attention to this man right here because we might see him again. The second was freedom of worship. And so this one represents people of all different faiths, of someone who's Jewish, of someone who is Catholic, Protestant, and they're all able to worship how they want to. Here's the same man that was pictured here. This is actually a man that he was neighbors with in the town that he lived in. Okay, and then there's the freedom from want. So you may have seen this one. This one is very famous. And there's a matriarch and the patriarch presenting this turkey and this feast, probably at Thanksgiving. Here's the same man from his town. And the last one, the freedom from fear. You can see the mom and the dad tucking their children into bed. And the dad is holding a newspaper about, and it's got headlines about bombings from World War II. But the children are safe from fear and sleeping soundly in their beds. Okay, so his studio in sorry in vermont there were the power lines ran over the studio and they caught fire and so his studio actually ends up burning down this is kind of a fun illustration of kind of a sad event really but rockwell wanted to make an illustration of it so you can see all the different um the timeline kind of illustrated of that night so that's kind of interesting and they move 
to Stockbridge, Massachusetts after his studio burns down. And here is a photograph of his studio that you can go and see. I believe they moved it to a different location, but that's his studio that he had after the other one burned down. Okay, so after 47 years with the Saturday Evening Post, Rockwell retires from that publication and he started painting art and covers for Look magazine. He became more interested in painting things that had to do with civil and human right issues. So here is um, his painting called The Problem We All Live With, and it's a painting of this young kind kindergarten girl named Ruby Bridges being taken into a an all-white school in Louisiana. And so he wanted to address issues of desegregation and civil rights issues in his art. And then here's a new one called New Kids in the Neighborhood. And you can see that there's some black children that have just moved onto the neighborhood and the white children are kind of interested and they'll get together and become friends, but they're kind of checking each other out here. And then here is another important painting that he did towards the end of his life. He never actually finished it but it's called The Golden Rule. And this hangs in the headquarters of the United Nations in New York City. And he meant to have 65 um, humans presented here to represent nations from around the world, um, waiting for leaders to establish peace so that they could live their lives in harmony. Mm -hmm. Okay, so beyond his serious and, and important work that he did towards the end of his life, he also did a lot of advertisements. So here's one for Jell-O, kind of funny, like the man is, you know, unsure how to make dinner. Well, Jell-O is probably the easiest thing you could make. And who doesn't love Coca-Cola? I know I do. So he made that illustration. And then here's an illustration for General Motors. Let's start the quiz. Okay, it's time for our quiz. Okay, so question number one. Let's see if you were paying attention. What is photorealism? A, artwork made by first studying a photograph and then recreating the image. B, an app that changes your pictures to Rockwell illustrations. Or C, pictures of real fruit. Hmm. You got it. The answer was A. Next question. Which magazine is Rockwell most famous for illustrating covers? A. People magazine. B. Life magazine. Or C. The Saturday Evening Post. All right, you got it. The answer was C, the Saturday Evening Post. Last question. Let's see if you can get 100%. What was the first artwork that Rockwell sold? A, graffiti. B, Perler Bead Designs. Or C, a set of four Christmas cards. Yes! Yes! All right, you got it. Congratulations. Okay, so friends, that was a quick intro, intro to Norman Rockwell. We are going to get together soon and make our own Saturday evening post covers. It will be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see you guys soon. Bye!